You too, was it going? The Goat House is back with my top 100 players of the 2021 through 2022 season. We're on to my top 50. If you want to see 100 down to 51, the most recent video, rank the top 100 players every single offseason of the week right after the Super Bowl ends. I do it every year, and I do it the same way every year. It's based off not only the regular season, but the playoffs in the Super Bowl count as well because it's the most important time of the year. If players can play against the best, play under pressure, uh, they deserve to be rewarded for it. So that's how I do it. It's my system. We're sticking to it. Uh, join us for all of our content. We already got off-season content rolling out. More to come. No one covers the off-season like the Go Dow, so join us for all of it. We much appreciate it. Check out our Twitter. Check out our Patreon. Extra content there. Link Links pinned in the comments. Yeah, Twitter's a must-follow. A lot going on there. Uh, again, we already went through 100 down to 51. Last video. We're at number 50, Devondre Campbell, who had a breakout season for the Packers, really helped elevate that Packers defense, kind of go from middle of the pack, maybe that's generous, to uh, definitely above average here this year. And they definitely he definitely helped elevate that run game for sure and had a breakout year on his own of his own there. Um, so impressed with him, free agent. We'll see if he tries to stay put, maybe on a cheaper contract because that's where he fits or if he gets a, a payday going elsewhere after his breakout season. So we will see. Definitely something I'm looking forward to seeing. 49 is going to be Jesse Bates. During the regular season, he played solid. He didn't play at that elite level he did last regular season. But the playoffs, he really bumped himself up. You know, if it wasn't for the playoffs, he'd probably be a little bit further down this list. Uh, but he was outstanding in the playoffs. One of the better defenders in the playoffs. A playmaking safety. We see that every single year since he's came in. Um, very good instincts. Know how to read the quarterback, take the ball away. So, again, was just huge. Uh, with coming up with big plays in the playoffs. I mean, starts with that Tennessee game. I mean, the first play of the game with an interception, it's such a game-changing play to start a game. It's just something – it's just rare. And, you know, it, it's you see a player like that that just continues to make plays. It happens, and it's just, you know, he's built for that moment. So, uh, Jesse Bates at 49. 48, another Bengal. There's a, again, there's a lot of Bengals, a lot of Rams in this list too. I mean, it makes sense on why they uh, made it to the distance. But Logan Wilson had himself a season – uh, the Bengals linebacker that is, that is tackle machine, but was a playmaker as well in coverage, and that's what kind of stood out there. But another guy that really elevated his game in, in the playoffs, in the Super Bowl. I mean, he played out of his mind in the Super Bowl as well. Uh, just a total package type linebacker, and he was kind of, when he was a prospect, he was kind of under the radar type day two guy, and he um, and we see why. We see why that the league was kind of higher on him than most of the media. Um, fantastic young linebacker, could you know, he could be known as maybe one of the elite ones um, very soon. You know, maybe next year. We, we will see. So excited to watch him. 47 is going to be George Kittle. You know, you want to see him stay fully healthy, finish the year, but just such a dominant factor of that offense, obviously, whether it comes to, you know, pass catching, but people forget about blocking as well, how dominant he is, uh, you know, in and around the line of scrimmage, but, you know, getting outside and downfield as well. I think blocking is what makes him his money on top of the uh, after-the-catch ability as well, but people kind of forget the blocking aspect. So he comes in at 47. 46, I mean, Mike Hilton, yes, another Bengal. I feel like we're constantly saying that. Uh, the Bengals are so balanced, so deep. Uh, Mike Hilton, arguably the best slot corner in football, uh, and you see why they signed him. They want to... It's the thing, the Bengals, they just mix so many different looks up defensively. That's why the defense was so good. And Mike Hilton's a big piece of that. You know, whether it's man coverage, zone coverage, him blitzing, he's probably the best blitzing slot corner in football. Uh, and he, I feel like he um, was instinctive with, with his blitzing. Like he decided when he's going to blitz, when it was the right opportunity, and he made plays off that. And another outstanding uh, showing in the playoffs uh, for another Bengal here at Mike Hilton. So that helped, that definitely boosted his ranking a bit. 45 is going to be DeMario Davis of the Saints. Uh, another solid year for him, a big piece of that defense. They did lose a few people on that defense, but it still you know, stayed playing at a high level. And I think I really think it starts with DeMario Davis, a total package linebacker, you know, stops running at a high level. I mean, a tackle for a loss machine this year usually is. Very good in coverage, and when he blitzes too, that's a big way the Saints generate their pressure. So another big year for him, uh, keeping that Saints defense alive there. Uh, 44, Vita Vea, who I thought was the top nose tackle in football. You know, the stats people, you know, won't love him being ranked high because, you know, he, how many sacks did he get? Well, it's not all about that. He uh, created pressure, collapsed pockets, but just the just the best run defender on the interior in football. Uh, and that's a big reason why the Bucks, bu the Bucks have a elite 
Uh, run stopping defense starts with Vita Vea there, and that's why he got a big contract. So impressed with him, the young nose tackle. 43, Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott had a really good year. Uh, the Cowboys, one of the best offenses in football, especially passing offenses, spreading the ball around. I thought Dak was very clutch during the regular season, you know, when, when they were kind of tight in games or, uh, you know, even getting in the red zone and making sure they capitalized on points. I thought he clutched up. He hit some tight window throws, more tight window throws than ever. Uh, and that's why he was so good this year. That's why it kind of disappointed me a little bit, why I was kind of hard on him in the playoff game. Uh, because it wasn't all of his fault, but I expected a lot more because he's kind of elevated his game and he had all these tight windows, these clutch throws, and he kind of didn't want to go for the – he didn't have a lot of time, but he didn't really want to go for those throws in that playoff game against the 49ers. So I kind of wished – that's why, because he was so good and I got so much – I got high hopes for Dak Prescott that let me down a little bit in that game. So hopefully he gets back to kind of playing and getting confident in those big games to where he did in the regular season there. Uh, 42, Joel Batonio. Uh, definitely the best Browns offense line from this year, in my opinion, but that interior is just so good. Um, you know, we talked about Teller in the first video, Petonio, and, and they have J.C. Treader on the interior as well. Just a big reason why they're able to play that smash mouth football of theirs uh, in Cleveland. Uh, 41, A.J. Terrell in his second year had himself uh, a season, you know. Talk about it all the time. You know, I think it's changing with these corners because it used to be the corners, the great prospects, they, they – we – may not realize how good they were until three, four, five years down the road. But some of these guys are taking off pretty early. A.J. Terrell's one of them. I mean, a lockdown season. And then you factor in that, I mean, the Falcons probably got some underrated guys in their defense, you know, some under-the-radar guys that are probably better than people give them credit for. But who else did they got back there in coverage? Who, you know, they're lacking in the pass rush, you know, edge rush. So he's got to cover, cover for a while, and he's able to lock down the way he did. I think the funny story about A.J. Terrell is when he – um, when he played uh, Jamar Chase uh, in, um, in his last year in college, uh, you know, against Clemson versus LSU, he, he he got outplayed in that game. I think people held that against him a little bit too much. It just turns out they're both very, very good football players, and we will talk about Jamar Chase in this ranking, uh, in these rankings here. Forty Lane Johnson had a fantastic year. Good to see him stay healthy and um, yeah, very efficient. Didn't didn't really let anything buy him there. Uh, Eagles, you know, they always, I think number one with them is let's make sure we have a, we have great offensive line play. We have great protection. We can run block. Um, and that's, and if they can't start with that, then, you know, if they're not succeeding in that, then, you know, things aren't right, but they did that. That's the start. And then it kind of led to everyone else around them getting better. And they got to the playoffs and surprised some people there. So another good year for Lane Johnson, 39, Max Crosby. Uh, who got a ton of pressure, got after the quarterback a lot, just seemed to be a problem for offensive lines. I wish he kind of get those sack totals up a little bit, you know, actually get the – because the difference of getting pressure on a quarterback, the great quarterbacks, and getting them down, it's a pretty big difference actually. Uh, but he's close. He's going to get there. He's, he's definitely a candidate to lead the league in sacks one day, maybe this year. Uh, but, he's, yeah, he's definitely a force, a lot of upside there. Uh, and, we, and the Raiders got a very good defensive line coming in with Patrick Graham. So I'm really, and it's probably going to be more of a 3 4 defense. I'm not worried about Crosby at all adjusting to that. Very talented. So I'm excited excited to see him uh, move forward here. Maybe a star pass rusher of the future here. 38, Mike Evans, touchdown machine. Once again, contest, one of the best contested catch wide receivers. And we saw. You know, them lose Antonio Brown, Chris Godwin uh, go down, obviously, and Mike Evans had to step up, kind of carry the load, and he did a pretty good job, helped him try to come back in that Rams game in the playoff as well, kind of beating Jalen Ramsey there. So it's yeah, another fantastic season with Mike Evans. We know we're going to give Mike Evans. It's going to be a stud, obviously, uh, every year. Um, he's without Tom Brady, but I'm still counting out going forward, but I'm still confident with Mike Evans going forward. 37, Joey Bosa. I like Joey Bosa's season. I thought he, um, you know, he was a guy that – you know, kind of where Max Crosby was this year. Max Crosby got, you know, he got plenty of production. But Joey, uh, Joey Bosa is the guy that kind of got pressure, but he wasn't getting all these sacks. He was kind of a step away from getting, you know, this many more sacks. I thought he was kind of a step closer to that this year and got and got quite a bit of production, got after the quarterback. I like the way they used them too. They, they actually moved him around a bit, you know, because they ran more of a 3-4 base. So that's the edge rushers, the outside linebacker position, but, and you play there. And sometimes he would play as a 3-4 end. And that would really throw teams off. So kind of a kind of a pre-snap problem for offense is Joey Bosa. So I really liked his season. I thought he was definitely a big time force, especially down the stretch of the season there. Uh, so he's another guy that can be like a top ten guy in my opinion at any given time. I think he's very close to being right there. 
36 going to be Joe Tooney of the Chiefs as a big-time signing. You see him a versatile guy, can move around the offensive line. But, I mean, that offensive line was one of the best in football. I think it starts with a guy like Joe Tooney, just so dominant in both the run game and, and in terms of pass protection as well. So, uh, especially in the playoffs, I mean, you can kind of – kind of create a highlight tape out of uh out of a guy like that too for sure so very impressed with him uh 35 jordan poyer one of the best safeties this year that the bill the bills it's one of those teams they had such a good defense and it starts it starts with the safety so i think it starts with those safeties and, you know they're Tredavious white's gone at the cornerback position they're a little thin there but they're able to cover things up in coverage because of the star safety duo of Poyer and Hyde, who are, to me, pretty interchangeable. Hyde's more of the free safety, Poyer the strong, but there's a lot of split safety looks where it's neither are really the free or strong, but um, they just complement each other so well. So it's hard to split them up. It's hard to decide because one week one's going to be better. You know, Poyer maybe a little more consistent. Hyde has maybe got a little more flashy, maybe maybe more of that special impact play, game-changing play, but they're right next to each other because they're pretty tough to split up here. Uh, but Hyde comes in at 34 Again, just a, just a star safety duo. A big reason why they are the top group uh, in football. And Hyde just coming up with some clutch plays definitely uh, uh, helped the Bills out a ton this year. So 35 and 34 right there. 33, Zach Martin, you know, one of the best interior offense linemen in football. Just absolutely dominant in terms of the run blocking and pass protection with the run blocking game. Just absolutely ridiculous. Some good holes for those backs in Dallas. I mean, they average a ton of yards per carry that's why it kind of left people wondering if they're going to run the ball more because they're so effective at it but starts with Zach Martin uh 32 to be Kevin Byard I thought Byard was uh the best safety in football this year uh and then you look at I mean the the two Bills guys were right there with them but Byard was such a playmaker back there I think he kind of took a not only a step down but I think he was a little little off still good last year but kind of back to playing where we saw Kevin Byard going but just such a big time playmaker uh, so good at reading the quarterback and, uh, and and making plays, obviously, on the ball. So he comes in at 32. 31, me, Tristan Wirth, second-year guy, just as dominant as he was last year. We see him come out in the playoffs, which is a tough blow. And you see just the insane difference with and without Tristan Wirth. So it was a key piece to protecting uh, Tom Brady. And just, again, as soon as they added him, it just felt like that offensive line really – because the worst was kind of that last piece of that puzzle, just really boosted – Boosted up a year ago when they took him. 30, Trey Hendrickson. Uh, the whole starting Bengals defensive line made this list. Trey Hendrickson, who was, uh, I don't want to say under the radar signing because he got a pretty good amount of money. He had some production on the Saints last year. He wasn't on the field every down for the Saints. So that kind of had people wondering. He was only on obvious passing situations where they had multiple pass rushers. So was he kind of feeding off the rest of the guys? That's kind of what people wondered. The Bengals wanted Carl Lawson back. They missed out on him, so then they went and got Hendrickson instead, and it ended up working out super well, super efficient, getting after the quarterback. Also could stop the run, which was some there was some doubts about that um, as well. Can he play on early downs? And such a good defensive line over there, and was just so key uh, in the playoffs throughout the playoffs. Super Bowl game had a sack on the first drive to kind of force a punt, force a third and long situation. Uh, you know, against the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game, they the the the, game, the successful game plan adjustment second half was kind of just as many guys in coverage against Mahomes in this high powered uh, offense. So we only can really rush three most of the time, and it's Hendrickson was still getting pressure on that. Um, so that was impressive. He had a monster year, better than really anyone expected there. So looks like he's the real deal. Looks like that that production with the Saints even was the real deal. So excited to watch uh, this Bengals. Uh, Defensive line continue to to because it's pretty young too to grow with each other here. Twenty nine to be Stephon Diggs. Thought he was better last year, but still very uh very productive this year. Obviously, can take the top off the defense. Really stretches the defense. Uh, keep kind of keeping them on their toes and uh you know worried about uh, really him going anywhere across the field, downfield, underneath. You know the the back shoulder seems to be deadly from Josh Allen to Stephon Diggs. So. Um, yeah, another fantastic year for him. It's just uh, quite the duo there between Allen and Diggs. 28, I mean, Robert Quinn, which maybe maybe a little bit of a surprise. He played pretty well as last year for the Cowboys, and the Bears bring him in last year, last season, extremely underwhelming. It just doesn't live up to his contract whatsoever. You, know, you expect a lot more production. There's, real, there's really any – there's no production for the most part there. And this year he breaks the team's – the franchise sack record, and that was really without Khalil Mack pretty much all year, uh, which is a little surprising and pretty damn impressive. He was definitely a problem for 
for for uh, offense, offensive lines too. It's just crazy how he was able to do that, you know, without Clo Mack, because is better than Clo Mack's really ever ever done, and he's supposed to be the guy. So extremely impressive uh, year for Robert Quinn uh, on that Bears defense. So. Now, yeah, I'm excited about, you know, because Eberflus, who they bring in as head coach, a very good defensive mind. Uh, and with that, he hasn't really had the best pass rushers, and now he has Robert Quinn off this year and Khalil Mack. So I'm very um, I'm very excited to see what 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 they got in store for us there. Uh, 27, going to be Joe Mixon, running back of the Bengals. Uh, again, fantastic year, uh, effective running the ball, catching the ball out of the backfield, downfield. There was games where we just think of the Bengals offense, and we think of it as pretty damn balanced, too. They can do everything. But I think the first thing we think of is kind of Joe Burrow, maybe Jamar Chase, specific type of plays, getting the ball downfield. But people don't realize they they won games with the run this year. They single-handedly won games. The game plan going in, like, okay, we got to run on these guys because they're going to they're gonna dare us to run. They're going to be worried about our weapons. At, at, you know, So we got to go do it. And there was games where Mixon really did it. He did it himself, and – and they didn't really need to pass a whole lot and um, have Burrow keep continuing to get hit a lot because the offensive line struggles. So, yeah, Mixon had a had a had a crazy year, very good year for him. And uh, you just wonder what if he would have got that ball instead of P. Ryan in the Super Bowl. People still question that a little bit, but because um, as good as Mixon was, you think he'd be getting that ball. But twenty six, we got Travis Kelsey, another great year for Kelsey. Obviously, I think he really took off. Maybe start a little. So I feel like the Chiefs start a little. So they did. They did. You know, not a whole lot. What we're used to from Mahomes, Kelsey, and it's still good. But uh, in Hill, but and they really got going. He really got going down the stretch. Just just continues to be that mismatch problem. Teams just really didn't know what to do with them, um, except for the Bengals. The second half of that AFC Championship game, they just dropped a lot more guys in coverage and uh, really had uh, two guys on Kelsey and Hill, but while being in zone, so it really fooled them more so Mahomes. Uh, a bit there but Kelsey another monster year uh, for him don't have Kelsey or Kittle as number one tight end this year so that's interesting 25 Jeffrey Simmons with the monster year a monster playoff game against uh, the Bengals too you feel like he didn't know he kind of had an Aaron Donald type performance you felt like he did enough alone uh, to win that game but yeah just such a monster that interior pressure we know we could stop the run on the inside we know we can move around a bit but that interior pressure is so key a lot of upside as well and it does you know it does make sense because he was kind of known as an elite prospect on a Mississippi State, but he uh, tore his ACL, you know, leading up to the draft, so that forced him to drop. So now it's kind of like, oh yeah, that's this guy was supposed to be this good actually, as long as he was healthy. Um, but yeah, that Titans defense went from that worst to first range this year. I think it starts with Simmons. I mean, I mean, we talked about Danico Autry was in the first video. That duo of interior defensive linemen was maybe the best in football this year. So Simmons is. Um, I think he's on the brink of being known as an elite uh, defensive tackle here. So I'm excited to watch him going forward. Uh, and these guys are pretty much in the same boat. Tough to split them up, but they had monster years as interior defensive linemen. Cam Hayward uh, of the Steelers, uh, very productive. You know, he's not declining. Uh, and I don't know if we expected him to, but, you know, he's kind of get to that point where it, wouldn't, it would be okay. But he almost like he's getting better. Uh, you know, just continuing to get pressure on the quarterback, getting his hands on the ball at the perfect time, kind of creating plays for, for his team, for his defense. I mean, him and T.J. Watt, different positions, but across the defensive line, uh, just single-handedly kind of, well, those two kind of just winning them, getting them in the playoffs, winning them games. So just a monster year from from Cam Hayward, um, a big reason why the Sewers were back in the playoffs. 23, Tyreek Hill, who really another guy, another Chiefs guy. All these Chiefs guys that we're about to talk about here. We uh, we talked about Kelsey Hill, and we're going to talk about one more, um, the quarterback, obviously. Uh, they also start to heat up in the right time. You know, it's second half of the year, going a big winning streak, uh, playoffs, and you see just, you know, you see the game like the Bills, you just remember that Tyreek Hill is just that guy. He's that, he's that, that, that problem. I mean, the fastest guy to ever play the game uh, is just, just that big of a problem. You have to – Double him, bracket him, whatever, uh, to stop him. And he's just another fantastic year here. Did start a little slow maybe with some of these guys in the Chiefs, but uh, comes in at 23. 22 is my number one tight end this year. Mark Andrews had a fantastic year. Uh, obviously, he's just the go-to guy for the Ravens. Seemed to come up in those clutch situations. Uh, third down, fourth down, whatever it is. Every time they have a short yardage, not every time, but most of the time they have a short yardage or two-point conversion, it's like, 
let's just stare at Mark Andrews because he's our guy. Like, that's the that's the go-to guy. It was just design a one-read play to him. And I wish they would kind of – I think that's where people kind of get on Roman a little bit. You want to have more options. But that's how much they like Mark Andrews um, there. And, he, yeah, again, clutch, fantastic, productive year for the Ravens. 21, Justin Jefferson. You know, talking about productive, extremely productive year uh, for Jefferson as a, a rising star at the receiver position. Uh, the best thing about him is, you know, it's kind of receiver that's taking over today's NFL. A lot of these slot guys are standing out, but really the best of the best are the guys that can play in the slot and outside and outside kind of equally as effective both. And that's Justin Jefferson kind of surprising people on what he can actually do outside in terms of, uh, yeah, deep down the sideline, contested catches. I am really excited uh, to watch him and Kevin O'Connell's offense because it's got kind of a big change for the Vikings uh, but in a good way for their passing offense for Justin Jefferson. So could he have, and he kind of already has to say, could he have Cooper Cup type production? He was already not too far away from that. So uh, going to be fun to watch there. Number 20, Darius Leonard had a monster season. Just, a, just such a playmaker in the big, the big moments. Forced a ton of fumbles this year. I talked about it throughout the year. You know, what I respected the most about that is, because uh, everyone's talking about the kind of the Leonard punch uh, him going for the, you know, punching the ball, knowing exactly what he's going to do. There's a lot of players throughout the, you know, currently in the NFL and throughout history um, that would do that. And even if they were successful at times, you know, sometimes you didn't love it because they would sit there and try to punch the ball out and then kind of surrender, give up extra yards trying to do that. But I didn't see that from Darius Leonard. Like he is somehow able to punch the ball out or attempt it while being in the act of making the tackle as well and not really missing feels like ever, um, which is just mind-blowing stuff that he's able to do that. So just rare, completely rare. And he's kind of – it feels like he's adding more to his game. So it's another fantastic year from Darius Leonard, another young player. 19 is going to be Miles Garrett, extremely productive getting after the quarterback. You know, again, a guy that kind of showed up and when it's the obvious passing downs, he's going to make sure he gets home there. So it's a guy that's, you know, kind of on the brink of winning a defensive player of the year, but he's got some tough competition there, obviously. Uh, but yeah, another another great year for Miles Garrett coming in at number 19. Number 18 is going to be Justin Herbert, and he did – uh, he did slide down a little bit because some of these all these other quarterbacks or players really got boosted up throughout the playoffs, and I really it was kind of I kept saying it's kind of a shame that uh, Justin Herbert wasn't in the playoffs because he's so damn good. Uh, just got to get him some help, that, you know, on both sides of the ball, really. But I think Justin Herbert's a guy that I really think he's going to win multiple MVPs. Uh, I think it's bold to say that with anybody, but we see he's got the talent. It could even be next year. I'm really excited about the direction of the Chargers. Uh, with Justin Herbert, you know, he's a guy, and it's definitely debatable, a couple other guys, a guy that went to the Super Bowl this year, on who, if you were to start a franchise, who would be your number one, who would be your guy, uh, and Justin Herbert is in that conversation, a strong, strong candidate in that conversation, for a good reason, just a, just a rare type of talent, and he's already way ahead of schedule, where, what he's supposed to be, so I'm, that's a team I'm really excited about moving forward, and it starts with this guy right here. 17 to Patrick Mahomes. He started off a little slow, but he really got going. You know, there was a stretch there, very end of the year, and then uh, early playoffs, and even the first half of the AFC Championship game. I know the second half of the AFC Championship game he would want back, uh, but that stretch, like I was talking about, just it's like, all right, yeah, this is why we've been calling this guy the best in football, uh, at least on offense, for a few years here. Uh, and you see it, just what he's able to do, the throws that really not too many people were able to make. So, we saw that stretch again that provides us with, yes, he at any given day, he could at any given time, he's the, maybe the best player in football. But he did have a, a little bit of bumpy moments here and there and why he's maybe not at the very top, but he's still at 17. It was great down the stretch. I know he want that second half of the AFC Championship game back, but he'll be back out there um, with a great season next year. We know that, and definitely an MVP candidate. 16, you mean Jalen Ramsey, the best cornerback in football, got himself a Super Bowl ring this year. Just a lockdown corner um, that's super instinctive, you know, could could play the receiver and the quarterback at the same time, can shadow guys, can play zone. We saw the Rams play a lot of cover three and four, mixing up quite a bit. Uh, I always talk about it, What you know, he's got all of that. You know, with it and those guys that seem like the corners that are so damn good in coverage is for some reason they lack, I mean, lack or maybe aren't perfect in terms of the tackling or reading run or coming up and helping his team. Not Jalen Ramsey. He's got that, and that's he probably is the best at doing that. Just so many stops, you know, on crucial outside runs, you know, third down, short of the sticks. So 
definitely respect that from Jalen Ramsey. I thought he was a little bit better last year, but still uh, top tier here. Him coming at 16. I thought he was actually the best defensive player in football last year based on what I watched. Um, 15, Jamar Chase, rookie receiver, comes in at 15. And I call him an elite, pro elite prospect, not even this year, year before. A rare prospect. I call him the next or the best prospect since Julio Jones. And he ended up kind of being that. So really excited about Jamar Chase. And I don't know if that was that bold because I think a lot of people, a lot of us saw what was coming uh, with Jamar Chase. Just a rare ability to uh, fight off defenders, fool defenders, and attack the ball, whether it's downfield or across the middle field. You see him get end around screen passes, but he's just a phenomenal playmaker. You know, I, I don't know if there's a guy better at a, you know, Playing the ball, you know, down the sideline, deep downfield, you know, fighting off uh, the corner or defender or whatever. I don't know if there's anyone better, and he's just a rookie. So, uh, already could argue he's, he's an elite receiver. He's about to be an elite receiver. He's just uh, just definitely a problem for uh, opposing defenses, too, because, I mean, there's times where Burrow knew he wasn't going to have time. He's just kind of just three-step drop and throw it up to Jamar Chase, and pre usually a pretty good placement on the ball. But uh, Jamar Chase, you know, he's got to go up and make that play. Not too many guys go and make that play, and just – just phenomenal in the playoffs, um, which which definitely helped the stop. I mean, a ridiculous catch in a Super Bowl too. I mean, that's just an inside. People aren't talking about that catch enough. I feel like like that catch early in that game uh, on Jalen Ramsey, that one handed catch while he's like diving. It, it was an insane catch. I don't for some. I'm just realizing that now. We're really not talking about that enough. How insane of a catch that was. Uh, he comes in at 15 as a rookie. Uh, 14, Nick Bosa. Of the 49ers, I mean, he had a, I mean, he had a year worthy of Defensive Player of the Year, probably. But there's just so many, there was so many good guys at the elite level at the top. But um, yeah, just an absolute monster getting after the quarterback, creating pressure, also stopping the run. I think that's where he doesn't get enough respect. Is um, he had some major run stops, uh, you know, this season as well. Teams going against teams that want to run the ball, but they can't really. They got to go away from from Nick Bosa here. I mean, so just a monster. Good to see him stay healthy too. Just great to see him stay healthy. Uh, because he's an absolute monster and could win the defensive player year at any given time. Uh, number 13, Devonta Adams, who's kind of known as the best receiver in football. Just such a factor there. You know, one of those guys that could uh, play inside and out e equally, you know, as effective. Um, obviously, just so good tracking the ball. Just now another dominant year. And then that's kind of where you wish that the Packers would kind of get another number one receiver because in today's era you need multiple number ones. You look at the game like the 49ers. The 49ers game is where after the first drive, which Adams was dominant, they just really doubled up Adams uh, and then made everyone else beat him, and then they couldn't do that. So that's where you wish that you kind of can get him some help. But uh, just such a dominant elite player here in the NFL, one of the best offensive players in football. 12, Micah Parsons, who I thought was the best rookie, actually, as good as Jamar Chase was. Uh, how dominant he was, how dominant he's going to be. I thought Parsons was the best rookie. Chase kind of had a little gap in the middle where he didn't. He was a little quiet, but uh, I had Parsons. I mean, up there for defensive player of the year while being a rookie, uh, winning defensive rookie of the year, just such a factor. You know, talk about the guys. I love the guys that are just such a problem pre-snap for the quarterback. Like, what is this guy going to do? What is he doing right now? Is he rushing the edge? You know, is he? Because sometimes lineup is an off the ball guy. Is he dropping in coverage? Is he dropping coverage to the edge? Is he blitzing from the off ball linebacker? What the hell is he doing? You know, it's just such a problem. And a lot of the time, those guys are good football players just because they're able to create problems pre snap. But then you got the, then you got those guys that also usually create for their teammates, create production for their teammates. And you have that Mike Parsons. But then you kind of got the rare few that check those boxes, but also check the box of get very good production themselves and Mike Parsons checked that box so just a, a wild player just a just a unique type of player that kind of you look at a guy like this and it kind of changes the game like we want we want to find another one of those types of guys so he comes in at number 12 just an insane year for a rookie here glad I had him as my top uh, defensive prospect in elite grade this year 11 Trent Williams best offensive lineman this year for sure left tackle uh, just such a bully of a blocker, just so, so dominant, not allowing pressure uh, and dominating the the run blocking game, especially there, which is a big piece of the 49ers. So, uh, and a great picture there as well of him after the Cowboys playoff game. Uh, but yeah, just a just a monstrous season for Trent Williams, and you see the steal of a trade they got, which they had leverage a couple years ago. Uh, but um, just huge for the 49ers and living up to that contract he just got. We're on to the big top ten. Um, all these guys feel like top tier guys. Tough to kind of split them up. 
Number 10 is going to be Jonathan Taylor, as good as your best, by far the best running back in football this year, as good as he was. It's hard to, you know, have him at 10. He just shows how good some of these players are, but just so dominant. Really, the Colts offense, well, the offensive line deserves a lot of credit as well, creating some good holes. But you see the combination of, uh, you know, physicality, breaking tackles, uh, and then quickness and speed, making people miss. Just, uh, you know, sometimes people don't even touch him because his open field speed there. Um, you know, just just a total package type of back, and the and we kind of saw that Wisconsin. It was just the only worry was can he kind of secure the ball because he had a fumble situation. He's somehow completely cleaned that up. So extremely impressed with Jonathan Taylor. Just a big piece of that Colts offense, and why it was a top tier rushing attack, uh, elite season for sure for the top running back in football from this year. Number nine is going to be Josh Allen, who really picked it up down the stretch. Really picked it up in the playoffs. Uh, really did, even the game they lost. I mean, just such a fantastic game. And he honestly could have finished this uh, number one. You know, if they would have, the defense would have held on in that AFC Championship game for 13 seconds and uh, the Bills would have played the Bengals in the, in the AFC title game and who knows, they could have been in the Super Bowl, they could have won the Super Bowl. Josh Allen was just playing elite, you know, as an understatement. I don't know if you can say better than that, but um, you want to with Josh Allen down the stretch. Um I mean, just so we know how dominant he is pass, passing the ball, but running the ball as well. I just wish he could have kept going here, could have kept playing. Uh, but does come in at number nine. Um, kind of hope perfect world to be the MVP, to be number one. How he played in crunch time, which is the most important time, down the stretch of the regular season in the playoffs. If he plays that the whole year, you know, he's going to win MVPs. He's going to be number one here. Uh, but he comes in at number nine. Number eight is going to be Joe Burrow. Definitely helped that he continue to clutch up and get his find a way, get his th team through the playoffs uh, and, and then into the Super Bowl as well, win that AFC Championship game. Uh, but just such a fantastic year for Joe Burrow. I mean, just so accurate. So accurate while under pressure. Is good. Uh, how did he do what he did when being under pressure and getting hit that much? It's just, it's just kind of mind-blowing here. You know, if he would have clutched up in that last drive and found a way, tough, but find a way to win, you know, he probably could have been – Obviously would have been better ranked as well, but get this guy an offensive line. It's very, very scary. It's a guy that can win multiple MVPs moving forward. A fantastic year from Joe Burrow. Incredible ball placement, obviously, and uh, uh, escaping pressure, buying time, throwing on the run. Those things is where he's already uh, feels like elite in. Uh, seven, TJ Watt, an elite season for him. Tied to sack record. I mean, the Steelers, you know, people wonder how they make the playoffs, how they're able to clutch up and do that. And it's just how many games that guys like TJ Watt with Cam help Cam Hayward, how many games did they – just with them, just win alone, and just uh, his presence and his ability to get pressure and um, instincts too, being able to know when to kind of drop and kind of play the quarterback, deflect the ball, just such a ridiculous season for him and just so close to breaking that record. Again, elite season, defense player, well-deserved defense player of the year. I think guys just playing out of their minds with multiple more playoff games. Super Bowl helped them kind of get above the seven here. Uh, number six is going to be Matthew Stafford, uh, Super Bowl winning for the first time, Super Bowl winning quarterback his first year on the Rams. Uh, yeah, coming at number six. Uh, had a fantastic year with the Rams, and especially in the playoffs in the Super Bowl as well. Uh, very productive, obviously, with the touchdowns, the yards, the big playability, the clutch plays. I think people – Maybe get on him a little bit too much. And you wish he cut down the turnovers a little bit. I think people kind of look at him as a high turnover guy. I don't know if there was that many turnovers in general this year. Um, you know, the amount of times he threw the ball, you know, the amount of times how clutch he was and the production he had, the positive plays he had, I think kind of over, definitely overtake that for me at least. And just, I mean, just being so clutch in the playoffs, the game-winning drives he's able to do. That kind of was just what separates quarterbacks like this from the quarterbacks that just kind of can't get over the hump is you look at that last Stafford drive. You know, you look at changing plays to the line of scrimmage, uh, understanding what coverage coverages teams are in, um, you know, knowing where to throw the ball, the timing plays, um, you know, no, you just all of that. And then having the ball placement, having the arm strength. There's just quarterbacks that kind of show that during the regular season but then can't really do it in when you absolutely have to. You know, you might only can count on one hand on how many can do that, and Stafford proven he can do that. So, um, number six for me, uh, based off his uh, season, first year with the Rams there, very impressive, and he got that Super Bowl victory. Five is going to be Debo Samuel, huge Debo Samuel fan, just so fun to watch, uh, just such a factor. I mean, he was the 49ers offense this year. You take Debo Samuel away, you got major, major problems uh, with, with with that with that offense this year, in my opinion, I mean, just their best receiver, their best runner, um, just 
I mean, it was at the point where, I mean, at first it was like, what what the hell is going on? What are they hitting us with? And then it got to the point where, okay, Debo Samuel is probably getting the ball here. He's in the backfield. Or Debo Samuel is coming in motion. He's probably getting the ball here. You know, to him still scoring, still dominating, still, you know, being as effective even when it's predictable. Uh, and then in the moments of third down, you know, a lot of third down crucial moments where it's, it's just, it's, I mean, it reminds me of, there's not too many running backs in NFL history. Like th- those guys that like in that situation where you have to get a yard or you have to get four yards, whatever it may be like just those guys, like the gr- running back greats, like they, they just found a way to just not go down. They kind of programmed in their mind and somehow a receiver Debo Samuel kind of has that in him where you just, you just can't go down here. You have to get that extra yard and um, just so damn dominant, just kind of a one of a kind type player. And we talk about value. I mean, just so much value that 49ers uh, team there. So he, he's in the top five for me. Um, was a big piece in the playoffs as well. Just fell a little bit short there uh, against the Rams. Uh, number four is going to be Tom Brady, the GOAT. Greatest of all time, hands down, no question. Uh, on his final season here, um, was extremely productive. Was a little bit better, with careful with the ball. Uh, the this year compared to last year, actually. And just clutched down a stretch of games. Um, I mean, you don't really have to explain what Tom Brady can do. Just so smart. Starts with his, really with his head and what what he can do. Um, and almost fought back. You know, it have been the only Brady moment uh, against the Rams there and almost really shattered it when they went on to win the Super Bowl there. So another fantastic year for Tom Brady. Felt like he was deserving of the MVP, but so was uh, other guys like this guy, Aaron Rodgers, who won the MVP, uh, comes in at number three, was the best player of the regular season. I agree with that. That's what the MVP award was. Um, He came up short uh, in the playoffs, obviously. It was a tough task for him. He didn't necessarily play anything near bad or anything. Just really couldn't find a way for some reason. Couldn't get the job done. There was a lot of doubles on uh, on Devonta Adams, so you wish they would have had a little more help, but um, you know some quarterbacks were able to find a way. So you wish he would have done that, but just such a another just fantastic year for him. And we're about to find out soon if he's going to stay with the Packers, or we made our prediction on that, but or if he's going to go with another team and we'll see if they can get over that hump in the playoffs. But he comes at number three, and then number two we got Aaron Donald, uh, who ends the game, uh, the Super Bowl game with uh, with a big time play, a pressure. And QB hit uh, on Joe Burrow, which uh, resulted in the incompletion of winning the Super Bowl there. Just so dominant uh, all year. Uh, was a candidate for the defensive player. And I think the defensive player of the year rightfully went to T.J. Watt, even though it's close between him, uh, Parsons, and Donald. But what Donald's able to provide extra in the playoffs while getting doubled and tripled. And the amount of, I mean, he took it He took it even another level in the playoffs this year. An absolute other level. Uh, and that's what resulted in him being kind of bumped up at the end of the year which including the playoff Super Bowl as the best defensive player in my book here. So I thought he should have won uh, MVP of the game because he was just his presence and um, the impact he meant uh, made was just in, insane. Um, but, uh, yeah, he comes at number two, just an incredible year for him. And I don't think he's retiring. But uh, and the guy who did win the Super Bowl MVP ends up being number one. So I would have gave my vote for this, just the Super Bowl alone to Aaron Donald, even though it was – it was pretty damn close between Cup and Stafford, actually, in my book. Um, but on the year in general, combining the regular season, you know, and, and the, you know, I talk about I think Donald was slightly there in the Super Bowl, we come on the Super Bowl, and in the playoffs, uh, I thought Cooper Cup deserves to be number one. I mean, just uh, historic numbers, insane performances, uh, clutch moments. I mean, everything you ask for, um, just absolutely dominant. I mean, the play. I mean, what do you have in the playoffs? He's probably the MVP of, if you take all the, the all the playoff games this year, he's probably the MVP of that, too, uh, rightfully so. Um, yeah, definitely had over 400 yards in the playoff. Just think about that. He almost had half of a 1K season in the playoffs. I mean, it's absolutely insane. Um, just extremely productive. Uh, found his right role with the right system. You see, they kind of tweaked the Swiss system a little bit. A lot more, a lot more eleven personnel there with the Rams, and it's just he's just gonna feast off it. Um, I think too. I mean, we talk about the hands, talk about footwork, separation, getting open, touchdowns. Uh, I mean, those are all huge, obviously. But I think 
Well, one, I think he's a little underrated. People have realized now, but I think he's a little underrated after the catch. I mean, he just slips his way through, breaks tackles. He has the kind of the vision after he catches the ball. I think that's one thing that kind of goes unnoticed. The other things that well, I mentioned that they don't, they don't. He's great in those. Everyone knows it. But I think number one, it, what makes the best, what makes the, the best receivers in the NFL the best is brains, I guess, just how smart they are and just understanding what the defense is giving you, understanding coverages, understanding what's happening. Uh, really, it all happens so fast. You line up, snap the ball. You don't have too long to snap it coming out of the huddle. Um, and then sometimes you got to figure out what defense is doing while you're while you're running a route. And, that, and we talk about Devontae Adams. That's kind of why he's known as maybe the best receiver in general. Uh, Cooper Cup's right there with them. We're kind of the smartest receivers in that category. Just reading coverages. That's why they brought in Stafford. You know, Stafford, uh, yeah, sure, he has a stronger arm than Goff. Um, but it's it's really nothing more than two things. It's kind of the stronger arm and kind of the a little bit of the brains as well. So that's why Stafford and Cup fit so well together as they are kind of reading those things at the same time and reading what they have to do. And that's why they're so uh, that's why they're so effective. I mean, the clutch drive at the end of the Super Bowl just it just just great players just show up in, the, in, in those moments. You know, all the time. You know, the, those guys weren't. You know they're they're great players for a reason. So Aaron Donald, you just know what guys are going to make the plays because the Bengals just they kind of made they had a couple a little quiet. You know they had them a little quiet during that game, but in the moment where it's like we absolutely have to do it, we absolutely have to score. I absolutely have to get open, catch the ball, find the end zone. He was able to do that, and he was doing that throughout the regular season, the playoffs. Again, he was probably the, you combine the entire playoffs. He's probably the best player. Yeah, he was the MVP. Uh, and then you get in the last drive and the clutch up in the Super Bowl. So all those reasons going together, he's my number one uh, here for for this season. And as you can tell, I, I do put a lot of stock in, and people won't, not everyone will agree at, with it, but I do put a lot of stock in the playoff games and the Super Bowl. And, and my reasoning for that is, again, it's it's what they play for. It's the most important time of the year. If great players can continue to be great and, and play great against great other great players, against the best under pressure I think they deserve to be rewarded for it. So other people will do the rankings differently. That's their system. It's how I always done my system. So usually have people that really disagree with it. But um, the regular season is, and we learn it every year. The regular season and playoffs are just different. You know, there's guys that just do play so great in the regular season, but can they do it in the big moment? And guys are at the top. We're able to do it this year, and that's what these rankings are about. And we do them at the end of every year. Again, they're not really based off of at all, based off of going forward or the way past. It's just kind of this year. So. Those are my top 100 players. Again, this was the top 50 in this video. 100 down to 51 was in the previous video, so check it out. We already have off-season content already up covering free agency, trades, uh, and the NFL draft. We will continue to cover those things. We cover them fully every single off-season. So join us for that. Like, subscribe, turn notifications on. Follow our Twitter. Uh, there's a lot of updates on there, A lot of just a lot of constant talk. Patreon has bonus off-season content. Links pinned in the comments for... Really, any that you're that you're looking for there, but that is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.